Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we're going to wrap up our camp knife video. Now that we've got a hardened and tempered blade, I'll use the grinder to clean up the scale that's formed on the blade during heat treating. If I were doing a high-end custom knife, I'd do this by hand with sandpaper to achieve a really high finish. But this is just going to be a working knife with fairly low grade fit and finish, so I'm taking the expedient approach. Now I'll grind the bevels to their final thickness and shape. Just a touch up, but using higher grit belts this time. Don't have a belt grinder? Do it with an Arkansas stone or a Japanese water stone. I'm leaving the edge extremely thick. Normally I'd take the knife down into the ten thousandths range, but this will be more than twice that. You don't want to be splitting three inch oak limbs with a skinny little bird and trout knife. Next, I'll be adding the handle scales. I use a kind of unusual fastening method here. I'm taking two opposing machine screws and attaching them in the center of the tang using a little quarter inch threaded insert. Not really my favorite approach, but something different. I'm using cap headed Torx drive screws. From a distance they sort of look like Allen head screws, but they're not. Now there's not any particular functional advantage to Torx screws, they just look a little cooler than say Phillips heads. You won't find them down at Home Depot though. I bought these from a specialty fastener distributor in bulk quantities. Okay, first I'll need to give the head of the screw a recessed seat in the handle scale so that it has some material to hang on to but doesn't stick out too far into your hand. I'll use a step drill to accomplish that. Check out my step drill video if you're interested in how that's made. Once I've got the holes drilled, it's very important to test everything out and make sure it all fits together. Nothing worse than realizing your clearances aren't quite right after you've started slathering epoxy everywhere. Next, I'll mix some epoxy and attach it all together. I'm using a product called Blade Bond that's recently been introduced into the market with its formula tailored specifically for knife making. Clamp it, clean up the squeeze out, and let it cure. Note that once the epoxy starts to set, I'll back out the screws and set them aside. So, now I'll profile the handle on the grinder and clean up all my lines. Now a little hand sanding, breaking the edges to make it more comfortable. Now 
then up to 600 grit to smooth things out. Once that's done, I'll lock tight the screws into place. If I had left the screws in place after epoxying the handle, I'd end up grinding the heads off, and you don't want that. After I'm done, a little torture testing. First, I chop a nice six inch oak limb in half. Chopping. And chopping. And chopping. If you're really planning to do a lot of chopping, you should probably have a lanyard, but I don't. Still chopping. Camp knife seven, log zero. So if that's not enough, let's try splitting this limb using the technique known as batoning. Anyone who knows anything about batoning knows you shouldn't use a knife this small on a big ass piece of hardwood like this. First baton, not up to the task. Let's move on to a 2x4. And we're stuck. Alright, after a good two or three hundred chops into hardwood and an abortive attempt to split a log, it still shaves hair. Well, sort of. Anyway, this is what a hard use knife is supposed to do. Abuse it, throw it in the truck, forget it for a while, and it still cuts. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.